Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. One of these handhelds on the table isn't like the others. Now you've probably already spotted it. What we've got here are some DSs, some 3DSs, and right in the middle, we've got the brand new Aya Neo Flip DS. A dual screen AMD Ryzen powered handheld gaming PC that really does pack a punch. I mean, it's actually a really nice device. And obviously the main claim to fame here is that second screen. I've already made one video, it was kind of a first look, but since then I've had this for a few more days and I've been able to really mess around with it. So in this video I can give you a good idea of how this thing performs with emulation, PC gaming, the overall feel, and we're also going to be taking a look at some battery life with this thing. First things first, overall feel. It's actually a really comfortable handheld gaming device, but it is on the thick side. Give you a comparison here between the DS, the DS XL, and the 2DS. As you can see, yeah, she's coming in much more thicker, but we are working with a much more powerful device. Personally, I do like the overall control layout. Round back, we've got these linear hall-based triggers, and they feel pretty good. Got some throw to them, so it's really nice for racing games. But as you can see, everything is basically recessed inside of the unit. That way that screen can fold over and close evenly. Everything's pretty much flush here. It's easy to reach these analog sticks. Personally, I haven't run into any issues with them. They are the smaller switch size hall based analog sticks. And when it comes to this D-pad, the first time I took a look at it, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Ioneo has always made a really good D-pad with their handhelds. And just looking at it, I didn't think it would be great. And of course, it's not their traditional D-pad that they use, but this is actually really nice. Again, very flush with the body so that screen can close and it's using dome switches, but I've tested it in my first video with some fighting games and platformers. It works really, really well. Taking a look at the secondary screen, it's a 3.5 inch IPS touch display. And as soon as you boot this up, you're gonna get Aya Space directly on there. This comes in handy for adjusting your power profiles, TDP, fan control. We've also got a quick access menu. And with this, I've got it set up so I can take a screenshot anytime I want. I could disable Wi-Fi. I could even enable RSR from here. And we've got an application launching menu. So this is really nice. You can manually add whatever application you want and it'll launch it on the larger seven inch, 120 Hertz IPS display. Now, of course, that display down there is connected to this device as a secondary monitor or a secondary screen. So we can set this up basically any way we want. I've got a video running on it right now. And while we're playing a game, we could actually launch a different application right here. You could browse the web. You could have Netflix going. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could play a lower end game while you're playing a AAA game on the bigger display up top. It's really up to you. Now, one of the main things everybody's going to want to do with this is 3DS emulation, given that we have both of those screens. You could do some DS, even Wii U utilized the second screen on your gamepad. So you could set those emulators up and we'll take a look at some 3DS emulation in a second. But real quick, if you're not familiar with the Aya Neo Flip DS, give you a quick rundown. For the APU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 7 7840U, RDNA 3 graphics, that 780M iGPU, 2230 PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD up to 2 terabytes. The larger screen is a 120Hz 7-inch 1080p display, which looks really good. 368 pixels per inch, 400 nits of brightness, and it's 100% sRGB. Now moving down to the secondary display, it's a 3.5 inch IPS with a resolution of 960 by 640, and it's got an aspect ratio of 3 by 2. Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, a 45 watt hour battery, and on this, actually around back, we do have an Oculink port and USB 4. So connecting an eGPU is super simple here. You can go either route to really up that GPU performance. And you can pick this up with either 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM running at up to 7,500 megatransfers per second. Now, obviously, I and Neo knew exactly what they were doing when they created dual screen handheld, and setting up something like 3DS is super simple. I'm using the Citra emulator. As you can see up top on the larger display, we've got our play field. Down on the smaller 3.5 inch display, we've got our secondary touch display like we'd see on a 3DS or a DS. I've personally been having a lot of fun with 3DS on this device, and we've got more than enough power to play these games. Citra emulator has definitely come a long way, and even though it's using the OpenGL back end, this AMD 7840U can definitely handle it. 3x resolution. I've got the TDP on the device set at 15, but it doesn't need to quite pull 15 watts from that APU to run these games at full speed. 
Now, of course, you can always play 3DS on a single monitor if you wanted to. It's not a problem to do so with a mouse or even if you're working with, let's say, an Android device, you can have them side by side. But having this extra screen down below really does kind of just make it feel like an original device. And now that we've got more power, we can make these games look better than ever. Aside from using that secondary screen for 3DS or DS, you can always launch whatever other application you want on that second display. Right now, I've got some Spider-Man Miles Morales running and YouTube at the same time. This is actually from my last video, just wanted to show you this. But another thing that I got asked about was just overall performance. And you know, we've seen the 7840U in action on a lot of handhelds and mini PCs, but I still wanted to throw some PC games in here to show you what this thing can do. And first up, we've got Tekken 8. Obviously, it's the PC version. 1080p, low settings. Not bad at all. Do see a little bit of fluctuation between 60 and 59 at this kind of wattage, but it is definitely playable. And when you go in and tweak some settings, you shouldn't have an issue running these fighting games. Next up, we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I'm just using the built-in benchmark. From the settings, I'm at the balanced mode, and I am using FSR 3.0 set to performance. 1080p, and by the end of this benchmark, we had an average of 87 FPS. So again, this game is fully playable. And with some tweaking, we could go ahead and lock that right there at 60, make it look a little better. We don't really need FSR set to performance here. But the final one we have is Forza Motorsports. This is one that I've been really wanting to get to run on these systems. And at higher wattages, yeah, we can do a constant 60. Right now, we do have dynamic optimizations on inside of the game, and as you can see, it is kind of fluctuating underneath 60. But as performance goes, it's really going to depend on what kind of wattage you're running this at. It's going to perform just like all of the other 7840U handhelds out there. Some, you can definitely reach all of these buttons. Now, one thing I've seen a lot of people talking about are the recessed buttons up top. Really no way around that with a flip down display unless those buttons are kind of modular, but then you got to worry about losing all that stuff. I think they did a really good job here. At first, I was a little worried about the D-pad, but after using it for a while, definitely got used to it, and it works out just fine for platformers and fighting games. Battery life is on par with other handhelds out there, given the wattage that we can run this up to, and we've only got that 45 watt hour battery. It is a bit thicker, and that's another complaint that I've seen from a lot of people, but I mean, you know, packing all of that into a small form factor device like this will kind of bring that size up just a bit. And finally here, the dual screen setup. When it comes to DS, 3DS, and even Wii U emulation, it definitely comes in really handy. But the main way that I've been using it is with iSpace. It allows me to easily control that TDP fan curve just to kind of get the best performance out of whatever game I'm running. And with the quick access menu, we can set up different applications. So while you're playing a game, you could have another application running. Like let's say a web browser, you can head over to YouTube, or you could set it up with whatever video player you like using and watch a movie while you're playing a game at the same time. And finally, performance. It is gonna perform like the other 7840U handhelds out there. We've got a maximum TDP through IA space of 28 watts. You can also have a little bit of a boost up to 30. So knowing that, we definitely can play AAA games on here, and it'll handle basically any emulator out there. We can run PS3, we can run Switch, 3DS, DS, you want to do some Wii U, some PS2, some PSP. It's going to run great on the IA Neo Flip DS. But it is kind of niche given that we have those dual screens. Not everybody's going to want a design like this, and I completely understand. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this a design you're into? Do you need a second screen? Is it a bit too thick? Are the buttons too recessed? Let us know what you think about the new IA Neo Flip DS in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning a little more, maybe even backing their Indiegogo, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.